Please must I tell you, you must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs, and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. I do apologize for being late. I was obliged to clear up some urgent business. At last we meet Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. However, there may be some new developments, but I, I don't know if they are linked to your mother. We have found Elizabeth Adams' body in her room. I'm afraid she was brutally murdered, stabbed, Several times. I can't believe it. We, we bumped into each other last night on our way to bed. Yes, I know. Duchess Hillsborough informed us that she accompanied you at the beginning of the evening. You apparently bumped into Miss Adams, who wanted to speak to you. We are told you turned her away, and she went away on her own. That's correct. Do you know what she wanted to see you about, by any chance? She seemed upset about something. I thought she was under the influence of alcohol, but we didn't really speak. Pity. The poor child was probably trying to find help. I thought it could wait until tomorrow. Hmm. Apparently not. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. Right. I'll get over there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. Monsieur Jacques Perru. What do you want from me, De Richet? Greetings. It's fallen to me. Cut the crap! Get to the point. We both know why you're here. And have you got anything to tell me? What does it matter? It's too late anyway. Do what you have to do and get out.
Dear friend, please come and join us. We must meet about the ongoing operations in Paris. A boat will be waiting for you in Calais and will take you to Dover in England. From there, a carriage will take you to the port of Tintagel, where a frigate will be waiting for you and other guests, so you can meet up with me on my island as quickly as possible. I await your arrival. Lord William Mortimer. Records of the police. Notes intended for the police lieutenant of Paris. It's a list of people under surveillance in Paris. And there's some well-known names on it. This is valuable information. This shouldn't be lying around. All right. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. I'd like to talk about the letter you're writing. What woman is it addressed to? Who says it's a woman? I'm not saying any more. There's no point you insisting. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. My dear Napoleon, as previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January on my island to participate in the high society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. See you soon. Lord William Mortimer. There's just one holster in Bonaparte's gear, and the pistol is missing. On the other hand, his cleaning equipment is in mint condition. That's typical of the soldier in him. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Did any of you leave during the game? Not that I know of, monsieur. I didn't exactly spend my time noting the other guests' comings and goings, but I don't think so. Thank you. What time did the game end? I can't say exactly. As for me, I must have stayed until midnight. I was exhausted, couldn't think straight, so I preferred to go up to bed. On your way up to bed, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, not in the least. The whole manor was sound asleep. <laughs> not really, no. Did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Nothing at all, except the luck of the devil of Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory at cards. Did they win much? Oh la la, monsieur, they cleaned us out more like. But I plan on getting it all back before we leave. Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well, there were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah, and his eminence, Piaget, as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him, poor soul. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Indeed, some powerful backers. Madam, thank you for consoling the Queen. The King's situation is worsening, but I wager he'll recover from this present fit. Next time you speak with Her Majesty the Queen, would you please be so kind as to ask her to look into my petition to raise taxes with the King? I will personally see to it that our nation will recover from this impasse. But 
King George's mental situation is slowing down our decision taking. Thank you in advance for all your help. William Pitt, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. A drachma. Elder addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Madam, I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need ask. With regards to my son William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, you'll be free from want. Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. A devil's thorn to be used to uncover the best disguised traits. What can I do for you, Louis? I've come to see you about last night's tragedy. Did you hear anything about what happened to Elizabeth? Yes, we all did. Rumors spread quickly, you know. How awful. I didn't know her well, but I hope at least the poor thing didn't suffer too much. Elizabeth was stabbed nine times. No doubt she suffered greatly. Nine times? What monster is capable of such a horrible thing? Do you know what happened exactly? In fact, Lord Mortimer has asked me to look into this case, Emily. Really? Are you Lord Mortimer's snoop now? I'm doing it for Elizabeth, not to please Mortimer. Good for you. Quite right, too. Have you found out anything? Did you and Elizabeth get to know each other? <sighs> I must admit, Louis, I, I didn't take much interest in her. I feel a bit guilty about it, but I never actually spoke to her. She seemed burdened by her problems, and as she wasn't invited to the conference, I didn't really seek her out. I hear you were in discussions with the Holy See. Oh, either His Eminence can't keep his tongue from wagging, or you've been poking your nose where you shouldn't, sir. Even so, Emily, you're raising a royalist army. That's no small matter. And you are straying from the subject. Is there anything else you wanted to ask me? Since your arrival, did you notice anything strange about Elizabeth? Everything that happened around that poor child was strange. You saw that for yourself. I know. You're right. I'm looking for leads to try to reduce the number of suspects. Well, I would say that in addition to ourselves, you could also cross off President Washington. I went to see him during the night. I had some business with him, and I can confirm that he didn't leave his room all night. Hmm. Well, that gives Washington an alibi. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. Grammar of Port-Royal. Ah, the artistry of the French language and all its splendor. Whoever masters French commands the world. At least. President George Washington. Greetings, Louis. Mr. President. You can guess why I'm here. Of course. Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... 
How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know, Mr. President. I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. Tell me, Mr. President, had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. Do you know why she came to the island? To get help, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Indeed. Sir Gregory suggested to her father that he introduce her to Lord Mortimer to see if he could help her. Yes, Lord Mortimer has a talent for healing, apparently. I'm not surprised Sir Gregory advised her to come. Agreed. Do you know if she had any enemies, Mr. President? Not that I know of. I heard about her altercation with Mr. Perry, but that case was closed, if I'm not mistaken. But if in doubt, I wouldn't leave any door unopened, and I'd go and question your fellow countrymen. Don't worry. Countryman or not, I'm not letting anybody slip through the cracks. Are you all right, Mr. President? Are you feeling all right? Oh, don't worry. It's this rotten toothache. What do you expect? I'm no spring chicken now. Are you all right, Mr. President? Are you feeling all right? Oh, don't worry. It's this rotten toothache. What do you expect? I'm no spring chicken now. I shan't keep you any longer, Mr. President. Feel free, Louis. If there's anything I can do, just ask. Thank you, Mr. President. Good day, Monsieur de Richet. Mr. Volner, are you looking for anything in particular? Next to Elizabeth's room? I... I... No. No, I... Nothing special. Has anyone told you that Elizabeth was killed last night? I... Yes. Uh, Rumors spread quickly. Huh. He looks very put out. It's... Uh, it's horrible. Uh, how did it happen? I can say nothing to you, sir. You'd better follow your host's instructions and stay in your quarters. I shall leave you now, sir. I will return to my room. Has uh, finished with this room. Do you know who could have made such a mess of this room? Miss Adams, sir. We were given orders to leave the room as it was, so as not to rush her. Did she have a fight with someone to get the room into this state? Not that I know of, sir. Miss Adams would sometimes throw a tantrum, during which she would destroy anything that came to hand. Lord Mortimer told us not to enter the room. Thanks for that information. You are welcome, sir. Has Sir finished with his room? No, I haven't gone over everything yet. Uh, sir may take his time. When Sir would like to leave, Sir has only to tell me. My dear Elizabeth, I'm writing to inform you of some unfortunate news. We won't be able to meet as planned on the first Sunday of May. I've been told that you're no better, and unfortunately, your brothers and I are absolutely snowed under by the work required to govern this new country. Please excuse us. As soon as we can get free, even if it's just for a day, I promise 
we shall come and see you. Your loving father, John Adams. P.S. Don't hold it against your mother if she still isn't ready. Please don't judge her. I'm sure you will be able to put all of this behind you one day. The clock stopped at 3.54. If it was smashed during the murder, then I've just established the time of the crime. That would clear Emily de facto because she was still with me at the time. A novel of the initiation of a young woman into a polite society. A notebook written in Elizabeth's handwriting. It is written in a mix of several languages. Not too easy to work out. June 11th, 1791. My dear Elizabeth, your last letter gave me much cause for concern. Your words were so cold, as if emotions no longer matter to you. Father maintains that the secondary effects of your treatment still trouble you, but that they will soon subside. Should I believe him? I cling to the belief that we shall soon see each other again, at long last, right soon. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. Don't forget to tell me what present you want. August 24th, 1792. Elizabeth, I am driven to despair and doubt there is any point in writing to you. I'm not even sure you'll receive my letters. Father controls my correspondence more and more. I am certain he filters our exchanges. Thankfully, one of the chambermaids is able to help me get my letters to you, but they still remain unanswered. I often think about you and pray every day be able to hold you tight. We have so much time to make up. I beg you, answer me, please. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. That horrible woman came again yesterday. She spent a long time speaking with father. I didn't understand everything because they spoke in French, but I'm sure they were talking about you. Thirty November, 1791. My dear sister, the cancellation of our reunion hit me like a stab to the heart. Father told me it was for your well-being, but I can't help but blame him. He claims that your condition has worsened and that it could be dangerous for both of us if we met. If only I knew where you were, believe me, I'd be at your side. I haven't received any news from you in a long time. Please write. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. I hope you like the enclosed talisman. Piece of fabric. High quality at that. I'd say it's silk. Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. The color doesn't correspond to Emily's black outfits, and Elizabeth doesn't have anything quite like this in her wardrobe. Let's take a closer look. It's a little dirty. It must come from the bottom of the dress where it touches the ground. I recognize that moiré pattern. It's the same as the travel dress my mother was wearing when she left. But why the hell did she come into this room? A pistol? 
fairly new, I'd say. And judging by the weight of it, fairly light. Hmm. There's a few dried traces of blood on the grip. Difficult to know for sure how they got there. It's extremely well maintained. The barrel is perfectly clean. It isn't loaded and well, there's no traces of gunshot residue. I'd conclude that it hasn't been used recently. A tribute engraved on the barrel. To the liberators of France. Right. I shall have to find its owner. A pentagram? What the hell's been going on here? Many esoteric rituals are based on this shape. Could Elizabeth have been sacrificed during an occult ritual? I wonder if Elizabeth's death has anything at all to do with this pentagram. If a ritual went wrong and degenerated, Elizabeth would probably have been killed in the center of the pentagram, not three meters from here. That's strange. Vials of laudanum. The label shows that this laudanum comes straight from America. I wonder if Washington's involved. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. Knocked over a bottle of wine. Plonk is that? Hey, it's a Bordeaux. That's a Chateau de Brion. It's a great wine. I don't know what's happened to this wine, but it's undrinkable. I count no fewer than nine wounds on the thorax with a lot of blood. On first sight, I'd say that's what caused her death. It looks as though the wounds were inflicted from a precise angle, as if, as if the murderer was standing behind Elizabeth. Some of these tattoos are veritable works of What's that? The skin between her breasts is different. Bloody hell! This tattoo was drawn on a page of leather and stitched onto her skin. Probably during childhood, if the scars are anything to go by. It's the same kind of tattoo as on the rest of her body. No wounds, but... Blood on the right hand, nothing on the left except that tattooed symbol. No marks or bruising around the wrists. It doesn't look like she was tied up or held by force. Blood, but no trace of blows on the legs. direction the blood streaks caused by the wounds to the thorax show that she was standing when she lost blood. This proves that she was standing when she was assassinated, possibly held by someone or 
something. More tattoos, similar to those on the rest of her body. I see no sign of bruising on the skull. The only clue is a scar from a previous craniectomy. Poor Elizabeth, she, she must have been very young when she went through all that. That's torture. She also has old scars around the neck, and maybe mutilations. What a strange smell. Was she bled from the nose? There are signs of bleeding, but I don't see any traces of bruising. There are numerous marks on the body. She must have fought like a lion. It couldn't have happened without a lot of noise. There are also a number of old scars. Scarring, ugh. Scarring isn't very regular, but they're mostly from old cuts. People who scar themselves in this way generally do so to release some kind of psychological suffering. By trying to master the pain, they establish their self-control. Poor girl bled to death. Whoever left that footprint has boats for feet. That's at least a size 15. Where's a size like that here? Peru? Washington, maybe. Part of the handle is unsullied by blood. The murderer gripped the weapon so tight that there's no blood where he held it. The handprint indicates a small and slender hand. The handprint on the handle is really small. I can't imagine a man with a hand that size. It must be from a woman's hand. Blood spatter indicates that the murderer must have held Elizabeth upright during the attack. Even if Elizabeth wasn't very big, I, I doubt she wouldn't have put up a struggle. It takes tremendous strength to overpower someone like that. chest with a half circle pattern. An untutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible. Has sir uh, finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door.
The Sorrows of Young Werther. There's a handwritten text signed by Von Wohner on this first page. Dear Elizabeth, I know that this book is but a small token compared to the delightful moments you gave me, but I hope that this will nonetheless keep the memory alive. Your ever obedient servant. So, Volner had a relationship with Elizabeth, but that's hardly surprising given his fondness for the occult. A table of alchemical symbols. Someone circled the zinc symbol. Golden elixir. What can I do for you, Duriche? Monsieur, Lord Mortimer has appointed me to investigate the tragedy that befell us last night. Oh, yes. It's horrible. Yes. How can I help, Monsieur? Excuse me for asking, but did you know Miss Adams? Oh, she... Uh, not really, to tell the truth. No. I found the Werther dedication, signed by your hand, Monsieur. Would you like to change your version now? Be careful, Duriche. Don't push your luck. My relationship with Miss Adams was pure and has nothing to do with you. Well, continue playing the detective as you see fit. But if I find the bastard who did that to Elizabeth, I will... Yes! I would have preferred a simple response, but I see I have my answer now. I get the impression that your romance was over. Am I right? So? What does it matter to you? I would never have attacked her, if that's what you're insinuating. Who put an end to the relationship? You or her? It was her. It was her. But what does that matter? We both agreed. Exactly how long had you been seeing her? I have no reason to answer you. I see. Is that what you want me to tell Lord Mortimer when he asks what I found out? It's... it's only been a few weeks. Did you see how many tattoos Miss Adams had on her? Of course. Who wouldn't have noticed? Yes, but I'm sure that an expert like yourself must have an opinion on the subject. I do. But she was seeking to imprison something inside her. Her own body had become a sort of prison. She wanted to protect herself, is that what you're saying? Elizabeth was a flame, a candle in the night. And like all candles in the night, she was surrounded by darkness, by her demons, call it what you will. One thing is for sure, she struggled against hell and high water not to let her flame go out. Where were you last night? In my room. I read a few ancient manuscripts before going to bed, but I didn't stay up long. I was tired. Thank you kindly. We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do. Your Eminence, I imagine that you've heard the news about Miss Adams. Oh, what a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? Mm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, uh, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble, Louis. It's uh, probably nothing. One last thing. You must know that Peru hit young Adams on the evening of our arrival. He apparently violently attacked her in the small salon. Do you know anything else about the attack? Oh, unfortunately not. I arrived too late to intervene. Young Miss Adams had already been submitted to the foul louts rat. Otherwise, you can believe me, it would not have happened. All right. 
Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. I know you were at the scene. We will save a lot of time if you just tell me what happened. You know nothing at all. Enlighten me then. For now, I have your footprint in a pool of blood. That's right. The only thing you can prove is one of my boots was at the scene. Congratulations. You've wrapped up the investigation. You were armed the night of my arrival. Can I see your weapon? No. You do realize you're not helping, don't you? You're making it worse for yourself. I'd like to talk about the letter you're writing. What woman is it addressed to? Who says it's a woman? I'm not saying any more. There's no point you insisting. Let's get right to it. Are you a... Elizabeth Adams murderer? That is for you to prove, if I'm not mistaken, boy. You weren't expecting me to do all the legwork for you, were you? Lazy man. Goodbye, sir. We shall meet again. Probably. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. As any good soldier would, I imagine you own a firearm. May I see it? Oh, well, if you really want to, here is my pistol. Don't worry, it is not loaded. Do you have several of these? In Corsica, oui, but not on me when I am traveling. Only a bandit would carry such an arsenal. Thank you. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. I've been studying him for a while now, and I don't think he was lying. Yet, I'm surprised how easy it was for me to read him. It must surely be his military side. I wish they all could be like that. My investigation would be finished already. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. What can I do for you, Louis? I found a torn piece of dress in Miss Adams' room. Gray silk. Where's it from? That's what I'm trying to find out. The color doesn't match any of Elizabeth's dresses, but I might not have found all of her clothes yet. Good Lord, Louis. I... Do you realize what this means? If this piece of dress isn't from Elizabeth, then it's... I don't have any gray silk dresses, Louis. Neither does my sister, since we wear the same clothes. Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted to check with you. I'm so sorry, Louis. Thank you. Are you all right? You know, I'm sure there's a good reason why your mother was at the scene. Thank you, Emily. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. Greetings, Liam. Were you aware that Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. Do you take it regularly, Mr. President? Unfortunately, I do, Louis. I still suffer from a terrible toothache, and it's not likely to get any better. It's just for that, then? Old age, my young friend. I don't wish it upon you, but you'll soon see. 
at my age, is rare to have no problems in that domain. And do you take a lot? A moderate amount, Louis. Only the dosage indicated on the prescription of my doctor. Do you know why she came to the island? To get help, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Indeed. Sir Gregory suggested to her father that he introduce her to Lord Mortimer to see if he could help her. It would appear that she wasn't invited to the conference. That doesn't surprise me. The poor girl was in no way concerned by our business, and she had no political clout. So, I don't understand why Sir Gregory invited her during the conference of his good friend Lord Mortimer. He must have realized that he wouldn't have much time to grant her. Preparing a conference does not seem an easy task. On the evening of our arrival, Lord Mortimer didn't even welcome us, what with his being so busy and all. Yes, you're right, Louis. I didn't think of that. It is indeed rather surprising. The easiest thing to do is simply ask him, you know. Of course. Mr. President, we found a footprint at the scene of the crime. Not a dress shoe, I hope. That's all I wear. No, rest assured, it looks like the print of a big ankle boot. A large size, I'd say. Perfect. That should help you, Louis. It's a clue. Greetings, Louis. Do you know if she had any enemies, Mr. President? Not that I know of. I heard about her altercation with Mr. Peru, but that case was closed, if I'm not mistaken. But if in doubt, I wouldn't leave any door unopened, and I'd go and question your fellow countrymen. Don't worry. Countrymen or not, I'm not letting anybody slip through the cracks. I shan't keep you any longer, Mr. President. Feel free, Louis. If there's anything I can do, just ask. Thank you, Mr. President. My dear George, I'd like to invite you to join me as planned at my place. I have a project to show you. It is time that the United States played a more important role on the world stage. I understand your reluctance of playing with fire. I know your new country is very young, but rest assured that I would do nothing to jeopardize what we have built together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Your friend, William. How can I help, monsieur? Where were you last night? In my room. I read a few ancient manuscripts before going to bed. But I didn't stay up long. I was tired. Thank you kindly. We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I believe I've identified the murderer. Really, Louis? All right, then. Please, think carefully before you give me your answer. This is a very, very serious accusation. Emily Hillsborough is the guilty party. Emily? Why? I have nothing tangible, but 
I'm certain that she is the culprit. Louis, I'm afraid this is simply not sufficient. This is a serious accusation. I need concrete evidence. That is why I am taking over this case as of now. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She seems to be making every effort to steer clear of your guests. What, what do you mean? For the past few weeks, my mother's been playing cat and mouse, if you will. I don't know why, but it wouldn't surprise me to learn that she's trying to avoid someone. The question is, who? And in your opinion, would she be the cat or the mouse? I'd like to answer the cat, but unfortunately I'm increasingly worried that she's in fact the mouse. That doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him, because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Isn't Bonaparte a bit young to deserve so much attention? Well, you've come straight to the point. I like that. Indeed, if you knew just how much you remind me of him. Trust me, I'll wager that Monsieur Napoleon will soon prove himself. I'm working on it, at least. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? She... she was looking for someone. What, what do you mean? In Paris, we were working on a smuggling case to do with occult objects. We had just arrested a dealer who intended to go to you to meet a buyer. My mother was here to find out to whom he intended to sell his stolen treasure. Oh. Uh, what was the name of your dealer? If I'm not mistaken, the dealer was called Von Broche. Mm, name means nothing to me. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Maybe she found something out. What do you mean? My mother has a gift for investigating. If she had picked up a lead, nothing would have stopped her. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. You seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jesse, or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, or even Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. Oh, 
My mother must have undoubtedly taken great pleasure in these exchanges. She always was one to appreciate broadening her knowledge. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. Huh, are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the Third. My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the siege of Saint-Jean d'Acre. Unfortunately, my lord, the Crusades are not my chosen field. Well, it doesn't matter. You have plenty of time to learn. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know. But I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister, and she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. The door appears to be locked on the other side. I think I heard something fall to the ground. A metallic sound, like, like a key falling to the floor. I'm gonna need something to help me get the key that fell on the floor. The door was closed from the inside. Would Mother have provided something within reach to recover it? What is this disc? There are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says, we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. We'll, we'll see if it works. It's open. Hey. 
and he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. Hey, there's a note here. A message from Mother and reply to E. We must leave urgently, but first I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Watch out for Volner. He figured out I was avoiding him. A lay suspicion. See you tomorrow evening. Stand ready. For now, let's cease all communication until we meet. Take care of yourself. I suppose this must be the last message. What happened afterward? If it's what I suspect, I, I fear the worst. What did Mother mean by, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare? I must go beyond the nightmare. What does she mean by that? Clearly, she must be trying to do something useful, but, but what? The nightmare, does that remind me of anything? It must surely speak of a place. Granting that this is the case, where might it be found? thought it would have been over there, but something's telling me that it isn't. I better keep searching. Mortimer's getting his guests together. I ought to join them so I don't look suspicious.